Hello, welcome to Angular After Dark. It's very dark outside and uh, I'm Lars, Lars Brink. And uh, it's been a while since last time, but uh, the reason is I'm fighting Streamlabs to give me back my money for a license that's pretty much unusable to me. Uh, so I'm trying to get a better deal with StreamYard instead. So right now I'm stuck at 720p and I can't stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So I'm using YouTube so that it stores my recordings. Uh, so um, yeah, today we're going to be looking at uh, continuing some work we did uh, in another episode. Uh, we're using the Lumberjack library. And uh, we were, let's see, we were replacing the logger or the logging mechanism or lag of the same in the Two of Heroes app, uh, the official tutorial app from Angular IO. Uh, so that's what we're going to look into today. And to help with that, uh, we actually have a new feature coming up in Lumberjack. Hey, Serkan. Uh, Santosh Yadav has been working very hard to uh, add our second schematic to Lumberjack. This one is for a custom lock driver. And um, a lock driver is where you hook up Lumberjack to whatever output of your logs uh, you want. For example, we have the HTTP driver and the console driver. Those come bundled with Lumberjack. You can activate them and configure them. But if you have a custom backend, you might want to implement your own log driver. And in this case, um, we want the logs to appear in the UI in the front end. So that's what we're going to be doing using a log driver. And uh, I will admit that it's not very easy to add a log driver. We do have some documentation on it in the readme file, but there's a lot of files to create. So it's much nicer to be using a schematic. So let's look into that and test out this new feature by Santosh. Let's see. I need to figure out how much and should zoom in. Probably like so, just to make sure you can see it in, even in well, a very poor HD 720 resolution. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get full HD again. Yeah, so this is our repo. It's the Tour of Heroes app. It's an Angular app. And last time we were working on this, we were adding, let's see. So in our app module, we added Lumberjack module for root. We <laughs> added the B-man <laughs> to the scope of the log messages. And uh, so, so we created a custom formatter. Uh, we also included two drivers, the console driver with default options and the HTTP driver with some options uh, so that uh, logs will be sent to this uh, testing backend uh, that's public, not something I created. So it's like a paste bin for HTTP requests or something like that. So now we would actually like to add our own log driver here. Um, and I think it should be called the messages driver module root. This is how we're going to call it. Um, scaffolding out the messages driver our registration. So this is the result we want. Um, hey, Nacho. Oh, I have no idea what time it is in Uruguay. Um, we're, we're working on some, some nice features for our uh, NG worker libraries. Uh, we're working on officially adding Angular 12 support for Lumberjack 2. And looks like it's going to be going well. Um, but that means we're also including Node.js 14 uh, because that's supported officially by Angular 12 as the first version. Uh, but also Angular 12 is uh, 
ditching support for Node.js 10. Um, so we're just making sure that Lumberjack can run with Angular 12, and it seems that it can indeed do so. So we're releasing a patch. And um, we're also working on a bug for our ng-worker Angular versions action. There was some time when there was a separate Angular official builder for ng-packager, and I think it was in version 11.0 where that was actually removed. Uh, and because it was replaced with just a single Angular builder, uh, but with a different name. You can have several names for, for builders in a single package. So the ng packager is now a, a builder, is now a target in the build Angular builder by the Angular team. Okay, Serkan, um, nice to see you. You have a nice night's sleep. And uh, uh, Nacho says it's early and he's been doing work. Yeah. Uh, Nacho joined this.labs or this.media, whatever they're called. And so I hope you're doing some interesting stuff. Okay, but for this driver, uh, yeah, let's see. We So we have Lumberjack set up and we want to be able to do this to basically output it to the UI. There's a list in the UI that can display log messages. And we broke that the last time because we replaced uh, their logging implementation with Lumberjack. But we we were missing the log our we were missing the connection to the messages component. So that's what we want to add now. Uh, we can also just recap see that we added this hero logger service. And here we have a method for each uh, possible log, and most of them were actually parameterized uh, loggers. And I I just started using Lumberjack myself in a project at work, and it actually seems like parameterized loggers is, is used a lot, so we should probably work on a nicer API for that. For now, this is how we can do it. Yeah, so... There is this messages uh, component, and it takes, let's see, it has this messages service, and in its template, it is looping through messages service dot messages. So let's look. The messages service has just an array of strings. That's the messages. And you can call it with this add message, which is also a string. And you can clear the whole thing uh, by calling a clear method. There's probably a button for that somewhere here. Yeah, there's a button to clear it. OK, so we want to hook up Lumberjack to this messages component. To do that, we need to add our own lock driver. Let me close all of this. And the nice thing now is I have, um, I have replaced uh, this Lumberjack with a, a build artifact from our CI pipeline just to test out this new version. So here it will say 202, which is the latest version, but actually it has this new schematic, the log driver schematic. You can see it, see it here in the collection JSON that uh, there's the ng add. That's the one you want to run after adding uh, Lumberjack. Um, so it will set up the basic configuration for you. And now the new feature is this lock driver schematic. Uh, so, and this, the source code, of course, is, is in here. So to run that, uh, we will do ng generate, and then the name of our package, ng worker lumberjack, and then the name of this schematic. So that will be lock driver, and also has an alias driver. Uh, so could also do it like so. And um, now we need to pass it some parameters. And I think the only one that's required is a name. So we could say messages. And let's see what happens when we do that. OK, let's review here. So it created a bunch of files in the messages folder that already existed. 
So it actually added some, um, let's see, two folders with a bunch of files. Uh, the configuration folder has a lot of injection tokens and modules and test suites for those. It's mostly just boilerplate. So basically, you don't really have to worry about all of this. This is where you want to implement your driver, this one file. Uh, so it's nice to have a schematic to set up that whole boilerplate for you. Um, so let's look, let's look into this uh, lock driver. Okay, so we have a, a class was generated. It's called the messages driver. And it has some generics to accept a payload. A payload is a custom uh, property uh, that we can add to any log object passed to Lumberjack so that we can ship it to the backend, for example, any additional properties we want to add to, to whatever is logged. And a driver needs to have a driver identifier, which should be a unique string. So let's just call it the same as the class. Um, and don't do it like so, uh, because at, at runtime, it will be minified by the Angular compiler, so the name will not be messages driver. So use an actual string for that. Um, you don't have to worry about what this does. This is actually a placeholder for a future feature, uh, but just know that it needs to be unique. So we will have a lumberjack lock driver config object injected into a property. And this is required to have a public property called config of this type um, to a lock driver. So nice thing that the schematic set all, all of this up for us. And now we can worry about handling these six different uh, levels of logs. We have warning, trace, info, error, debug, and critical logs. So let's just, first I want to commit this um, generate messages, log driver, driver, no driver. And uh, now we need to hook it up to this messages service. I don't, let's see, where's the messages service? Oh, for some reason, it's not in the messages folder, which is kind of strange, but let's, let's leave it there. And it's called the message service. So let me inject that into this driver. Uh, we will have a private message, message service, like so, imported it from a relative route. No, not that one. This one, yeah. Ah, that doesn't look good. To be a relative route. Uh, message like so, and that will resolve correctly. Okay. Let me just enable my. Not this one. this one, sort these import statements. Okay, that looks nice. So now we have our message service. Uh, so we need to add that to each of the, the levels of logs, critical and so on. So let's start with critical. This message service and has this add method and we need to pass it a string. And we can see that what we have here, the formatted log, is actually a string representation of the log object. So Lumberjack has already done the work for us. So we can just pass this formatted log and we don't have to use the other uh, property of, of this parameter. Where, and the pr parameter that we're being passed, by the way, is um, a Lumberjack log driver log with an optional payload. Okay. Hey, Bill, 
you're a bit late you want me to uh, bump up the font uh, yeah let me do that it's uh, already pretty big um sorry it's because i don't have full hd right now i will try to fix that at some point but uh, licenses are pretty expensive okay so yeah this is actually this should be it so now we handle the critical logs so <laughs> uh, we basically need to do the same for all the other ones and of course we could just add one method to do this but whatever it's not too bad So a very simple implementation just to hook up this um, log driver, our messages driver to our message service. Yeah, very good. Mm. Adds formatted logs to the message service. Okay, so that's the implementation. Uh, implement messages log driver. And now we need to register it. So we'll go out to our app module. And this is what we wanted to be able to do. So let's see if we can do that now. Yeah, we got it from here. Messages, configuration, messages driver module. And this messages driver module, which was generated for us, has this for root method that we need to call. And now we are also have the uh, common options for log drivers. And uh, it's this levels array. So we could say uh, we only want lumberjack level dot critical passed uh, to this uh, log driver for example if we do this uh, logs of other severity levels or log levels will be filtered out so they won't be passed by lumberjack um, if we don't pass this option it will depend on the root level configuration which we have up here we don't have levels specified so um, it's following the default uh, settings from Lumberjack, which is, let's see. Uh, I think in development mode, uh, every log level is passed to all log drivers. In Angular production mode, uh, trace and debug levels are not passed to log drivers. If you want that, want everything in production as well, you should do it like so, lumberjack level verbose. This will enable all logs at all levels, both in production mode and development mode. But um, yeah, the idea is you're not going to need debug and trace in production. So let's just use the default configuration. Okay, so this should be it. So now um, we will register messages log driver and the code should be done. So now it will be exciting to see if we can uh, output those logs to the messages component. Oh no, NGCC, the worst thing in the world. It's too late for that. Way too late for NGCC. Okay, so, well, one good thing is that NGCC is kind of coming to an end. Uh, the Angular linker is the replacement for that. And, um, 
Oh. Um, yeah, that's a different discussion. Now we need to figure out how we're, we have a problem here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we actually have an error in the generated code. Uh, so we need to fix this in the schematic, I think. Uh, but let's see if we can fix it manually first in this code base. So in our driver root module, Okay, so it's looking for a variable called the custom driver config, but it's actually called messages driver config. And... Oh, okay, yeah, so I, ox I also added um, a second dependency, uh, which is this messages server uh, service. So now, I need to pass that in this messages driver factory. Uh, so let's see, and this one is called here. So we need an, another dependency, uh, message service. Like so in this dependencies array, and then we accept it as another parameter here to the factory function for the provider message service. And we can then pass it into the constructor of our messages driver. So this factory is merging. Uh, it's copying over the properties of the root configuration um, and merging it into a new separate configuration for this driver specifically so that we can have uh, different options on the driver level if we pass them to this for root method. So this will enable us to have separate options here as we were reviewing before. Okay, let's see if can compile with that. Yeah, that worked. Okay, I need to add a, a comment to our pull request. Uh, we're almost finishing this feature. So it's nice to just see that uh, if it will work. Uh, so this one will be, let's see, I want to, uh, how, where's, the, where's the amend option? Strange. Oh, <laughs> I have the mouse. Hovering over it. Yeah, okay. I, di I didn't look at the parentheses for some reason. Okay. Commit all amend. Yeah. Okay. So Bill is asking how to use different levels or for what different cases do you use one over the other? Um, well, that's up to you. You have six different levels to use and you can decide what they mean for your project. But for, um, let's see. Um, so the .NET ecosystem has a similar as number of uh, levels. You see they have critical, debug, error, information, non, trace, and warning. So they basically have the same as Lumberjack, except for this non one. Um, and this is actually, a not, I think, this one and another page on the, the Microsoft Docs explains uh, about logging levels. So you can you can look into that um, if you want some guidance on when to use what. For example, here it says that critical level is logs that describe an unrecoverable application or system crash or a catastrophic failure that requires immediate attention. So that would be an um, any sort of exception that shouldn't happen, uh, something you didn't uh, take into account in your code, or that will stop the Angular application or whatever, or uh, I don't know, you lost connection and you're unable to regain that connection to some service or whatever. 
debug levels, logs that are used for interactive investigation during development. And that's why it's disabled in production. These logs should primarily contain information useful for debugging and have no long-term value. The error level logs that highlight when the current flow of execution is stopped due to a failure. These should indicate a failure in the current activity, not an application-wide failure. So critical will basically break the application or whatever you're doing. And an error will be more a more, more local error. And I would normally say that these are the expected exceptions. So for example, uh, I mean, maybe we know that sometimes the the backend or some some API is unavailable, but it doesn't break the experience of the the user experience of, of the whole the whole app. So that's an expected error, or and and we are able to recover from that by maybe retrying a few times or later or or something like that. Um, the information log is uh, the information log level is logs that track the general flow of the application. These logs should have long-term value. And trace is logs that contain the most detailed messages. These messages may con contain sensitive application data. These messages are disabled by default and should never be enabled in a production environment. So that's the .NET. Um, See if it's in .NET Core. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, so I'll just put in the link here in the, the chat. And I think there is another documentation uh, page somewhere. Uh, I just don't have it open right now, uh, but it kind of discusses these logging and these levels as well. Uh, but yeah, the, that's some guidance, but it's up to you. You have these six levels. You can use them how, however you want. And uh, similar to .NET here, the, the debug and trace levels are not enabled in production by default. Uh, but you can you can enable them. Uh, you can override the settings to whatever you like. OK, so now we sh might have an application running. It's this Two of Heroes app. And yay, look at that. We have a trace log fetched heroes in the messages. So apparently our driver is working. Let's clear the messages, go to Nacho's page. And we have another, another log message here, fetched hero with ID 12. Let's go back. Let's look at Serkan. And now it fetched all the heroes on the, the page we saw before. And now it fetched. Uh, Serkan with the hero ID of 13. So yeah, this is actually dashboard fetch the heroes, the heroes page. Also fetch the heroes. What if we added one? Might not work. Um, oh, let's say Bill. added the hero with ID 21. OK. Let's look at Bill. Fetch the hero with ID 21. OK. So Bill is short for William. So let's change that name. And we updated hero with ID 21. Now it says William instead of Bill. Nice. So our custom log driver is working. The schematic was almost working. It was just one variable name that didn't match. So I'll add that to our pull request. Uh, so it was nice to see it in practice. And um, yeah, the whole idea about Lumberjack or one of its, um, its the things that makes it interesting is uh, as soon as we have these logger services find uh, we won't have to change this code or the code calling this logger service to add another um, log driver. So, for example, to add another backend. And 
right now we have this uh, HTTP driver. It will, we will pass it an endpoint URL and it will ship, uh, it will send HTTP requests with the log objects and some metadata. And um, yeah, you can find that interface in the documentation. So it's just for a simple backend. You have to accept a request, a post request for this URL and the objects. It's It'll be an object per request, a log object with some metadata. Uh, so we have this one. It comes with Lumberjack. We have the console driver so that we will, uh, we should also see it. Let, yeah, let's try that. Should also see it in the browser console. So yeah, we're seeing the same things here in the browser console. We have trace and it says the same uh, message, the formatted log output. And the undefined is, is because this log doesn't have a payload, but it could have a payload. Some logs will have a payload with uh, some data that you provided for it. And other than that, we're just seeing our retry strategy for the backend failing. Uh, but yeah, we see the logs here in the browser. We see it in the messages. And if we had a proper backend, it would also um, be sending the same log objects to the backend. So that is actually, now we have three, uh, three log drivers activated. The messages driver, the browser driver, the HTTP driver, but we're still logging through the same API, this hero logger service, or directly through a lumberjack service if you want a more low level imperative API. This is um, an, a declarative API. Uh, so this is pretty nice. We can add we can add log drivers, we can configure the log drivers differently, and we only have to touch the app module. It will affect the whole application, all the logging. So we won't have to change our logger services or wherever it's called in the code. So here it's in the hero service. It's called, it's calling this logger um, whenever we, for example, deleted a hero, it will log that. Uh, so that's, that's pretty interesting, I think. Uh, and kind of shows the power of, of Lumberjack. Uh, so as soon as we have this logging added, we don't have to touch this code again, uh, simply to uh, reconfigure our backends or whatever, or even add another uh, log driver. So uh, besides these two, there are two commun community-driven log drivers, one for uh, Google Firestore, Google Cloud Firestore, and one for Azure Application Insights. And um, yeah, you can find them on NPM by searching for uh, at ng worker. They're, they are hosted in our NPM organization. And we one of them is also in our uh, GitHub organization called ng worker. Uh, so, but if you're not using any of these two, you will have to add your own log driver. And this is where the schematic is helpful. It will generate all these files for you that you need, including tests and setting up the modules and configuration in a, the best practices way. Uh, so it will prevent you from accidentally misusing. Uh, for example, if we uh, just imported the module, but not the for, use the for root method, we would actually get an error. Um, at runtime, and we do. And it says, do not import messages driver module directly. Use messages driver module for root. So it has some um, features added for robust, being ro robust, um, and has tests for all of that. Uh, the only thing it doesn't add currently is it doesn't set it up for allowing uh, other options than the levels and the identifier. Um, so. If we wanted some custom options here, say prefix, uh, we would uh, need to look at the HTTP driver, for example, in the Lumberjack repo to figure out how to do that. 
uh, but we might add an option for the schematic later to set it up for additional uh, log driver specific options uh, here. For now, you can, um, yeah, we, we can add a driver uh, and we can implement whatever we need. In this case, it was uh, logging to this message service. Uh, but it might be send an HTTP request to your whatever your backend is or call um, some JavaScript library to log to whatever Sentry or Log Rocket or anything. Um, so this should give you an idea about how to do that. So that was it for today, Angular After Dark. And now we saw how to add a custom log driver using Lumberjack. And um, we're done with this uh, Two of Heroes application. We replaced the uh, to-dos for implementing actual logging. And we even saw how after adding this logger service, we could uh, configure or add more log drivers without, to, without having to touch the most of the application code. We only have to touch the app module again. So that is that is really, really something, uh, I think. And I hope you can see the value in this. And with this new schematic that for log drivers, you'll be able to add your own backend until there's a community uh, plugin for that. Of course, if you're using uh, some popular uh, log provider like uh, log rocket or sentry or whatever uh, feel free to uh, start a repo for the community uh, we have yeah i can actually show you we have um, kind of some things to help you help you with that lumberjack uh, inside of the ng worker github organization we also have the Lumberjack custom driver repo. It's a template repo on GitHub. So somewhere here, there should be like that generate button. Maybe I can't see it because I'm zoomed in here. Um, where is it? Where did it go? Usually there's, oh, it's probably because I'm not signed in here. Let me find a signed in tab. And I'm not sharing my screen, so maybe I should do that as well. <laughs> okay, so we're in the NG Worker organization on GitHub, and we found the Lumberjack custom driver template repo. So if you want to start a, a, a log driver plugin that anyone can use, click this button, use this template, and then it will set you up with a repo with everything you need. Uh, and for example, that's how this Lumberjack application insights driver repo was started. So it's not the, the Lumberjack or NG Worker team doing that. That's a um, community member out to a group. Uh, so he's maintaining this Lumberjack application insights driver for Azure. So, and this is all based on, on our, uh, our template repo for log drivers. So it will set you up with a CI workflow and templates for pull requests and basically everything you, you need uh, to, to get going. And it will, will even set up the whole repo with uh, projects for your library and test utilities uh, in an Angular CLI monorepo. With all of this, so um, that's one of the things we can do if you um, if you want to add an, another plugin for Lumberjack, a log driver plugin for some uh, log provider we don't have in a community plugin for yet. Uh, you can use this template repo. The other thing we can do is 
uh, we can host you here in our GitHub organization and you will still have full control of this repo. And we can also host your package uh, using the official ng worker uh, scope on on npm so for example if we search for ng worker we will see that we also have the ng worker lumberjack application insights driver and this one is maintained by Arta group and we have the lumberjack firestore driver by Marcin uh, milovic so uh, this is to help you with discoverability uh, as a lumberjack plugin uh, so get in touch if you want to create one for um, some some log provider. And it's very similar to what we just saw um, with our custom log driver here. Uh, it's it's basically all of this and then wrapping it in wrapping it in an Angular library, uh, a package for npm. Uh, so. So usually it's just about um, importing some some servers or using some JavaScript API and hook it, hooking it into these six methods. That's the gist of it. That that's almost all you need, unless you want to add some some more options for configuration, such as an API key or something like that. If you need that, you would have to be able to pass it here in in the object similar to what we have with the http driver so so look into that implementation and the lumberjack repo because that's exactly what it's there for it's there for being a very simple um http log driver and to be a reference uh, driver for uh, these more advanced features like adding uh, options and, and, and some metadata and uh, here we have a retry strategy for the HTTP requests so if you need something similar look into the implementation for that yeah so that's all I have to say about log drivers and lumberjack um, we're almost done with this schematic. Uh, so maybe sometime next week, we can release Lumberjack 2.1. And uh, we're also finishing up a patch for Lumberjack. It will prob probably be 203. There's nothing, I don't think there's anything new in it. It's just uh, making sure that we have support for Angular 12, which is now in release candidate zero. And that's about the time where we go and verify that lumberjack uh, works with this new version of, of angular so yeah that's all for today um and i'll see you next time on angular after dark bye